Um, so welcome, uh, my digital people. Well, you're all digital, I guess, but some are here and some will look at it in the future. I will, let me screenshot. We're gonna look at, what I'm gonna give you is some more tools. Let me make you smaller. We're gonna look at some more tools that you could utilize. These are, actually, let me get them, I'll show you. All right, so I have taken the, can you see me? I have taken the binding out of, this is two books for social studies. One is the student workbook, and then the other one is just a regular workbook. And we are going to usually use the student book because it's a little more concise and it actually has questions. Um, we have the science one. Can you see this or am I wasting my time? Can you see it? We can see it. Oh, good. Yeah, we can see it. Student workbook and then the regular workbook. We'll, we'll be utilizing the student book. It has a little bit of thicker paper. It's easier to scan. Um, then language arts. Okay, that's fun, right? Workbook, student book. It was really fun cutting all of this, by the way. And then this is one, this is tough because my scanner stinks and you can only do like 15 to 20 pages of high quality stuff. This is a new one that we purchased this year. Can you see it? Yeah, anyone? This is the complete test preparation for the GED. So it has a section for, um, language arts okay and we'll look through that i want to get into this a little bit more it has a section for uh, the ged practice test like one you would get and you have to pay for um there is a section on social studies and i want to work through this maybe next week get into some of this but in the meantime you can see my screen right yeah all right so what we'll do is we have the language arts or RLA, reasoning through language arts, um, intro, and then the unit 1.1. This is another textbook um, for science, unit 1.1 one, one, and unit 1.2. Social studies, three social studies ones and the answers. I try to print the answers for you too because we can look back. Let's go through some of this. I wanna do like an overview. <laughs> do a little highlighting as well. Um, so again, this is the test prep book that when you take your reasoning, when you take the, uh, not reasoning, when you take your, um, your practice test, you can print something out that gives you the exact page numbers of these books to actually look through, um, which is pretty awesome. And you can access that information uh, if you'd like to as well. And it kind of narrows the search for what you're actually trying to, um, for what you're actually trying to, uh, uh, to actually study, okay? Uh, and again, it's reading informational text and writing extended response. We'll look at that in a, a, uh, at a separate time. Um, so moving through this, this is like the first couple of pages, has the table of contents if you need it. But you can print this out if you want. This is what we would use um, for our classrooms, all right? Uh, so let's look at some of this. Welcome to the first day of the rest of your life. That's exciting, right? Now that you've committed to study the GED credential, an array of possibilities and options, both academic, career, and otherwise. If you're just, this is how I read. I, I have to like if you want to look at any of the books that I read, there's highlighting, there's, there's, there's uh, written stuff. I have Emily just popped in, excuse me. Um, Emily. Emily, how's it going? All right, uh, each year, hundreds of thousands of people just like you decide to pursue, pursue, pursue the GED. So literally hundreds of thousands. Um, I know in South Florida, they have like 
I have personally from year to year do about 1300 students that I enroll on a good year. COVID obviously we're a little light this year. Um, let me get Malin as well. She just popped in. Um, so we're a little light, but in South Florida, they have close to between 25 to 50,000 students pass a GED a year, which is pretty insane. Malin. It's actually Mary Ann. Emily is my sister's name. She uses my Zoom sometimes. Okay, Mary Ann. Okay. Sorry. I was like, I don't recognize that. Mary Ann <laughs> Zimmerman, right? Yep. All right. All right. Just trying to get attendance too. All right. So hundreds of thousands of people. I, like I said, South Florida, they have sometimes 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people pass the GEDs. They're a huge area down there. Okay. Um, like you, they left tra traditional school for one reason or other. Now, just like them, you decided to continue your education by studying for and taking the GED test. Today's GED is very different from previous versions. So in 2014, they did a big change. So you have things like trigonometry on math. Don't freak out. You have a difficult thing uh, on this exam. So today's GED is new, improved, all right? Uh, and definitely more rigorous, which is a big fancy word for more difficult and commands much more for you. Uh, with content aligned to Common Core standards, whether you like them or not, um, some people hate them, whatever, we have to deal with it. It's another hoop to jump through. For the first time, the GED test uh, serves both a high school equivalency credential, okay, and uh, as a predictor of college and career readiness. So, so we have the equivalency aspect and that um, you can uh, understand how well you'll do probably at the college or career level. The new GED test features four subjects. We have reasoning through language arts, as I've said, math, science, and social studies. Each subject area is delivered via a computer, computer-based. I just had a student take it at their own house, okay? And we're going to get some feedback from her. Um, you can do that. Um, it's a really weird thing. You have somebody actually watching you while you take it. You have to have like a webcam set up. If anybody enters, even if the dog slips in your room, uh, your, your test is revoked. Um, it's a possibility for those of you who might be immunocompromised or have some issue um, with actually physically coming here. If you do want to come here, we have um, accommodations for you. At least the very minimum accommodation that we could do is put you in and you can request to be in a room by yourself. Uh, I know Marshall kicked some butt on one and he was in the room by himself. Uh, Computer-based format includes array of technology enhanced it uh, item types. Uh, the four subject area exams together com comprise a test, a testing time of seven hours. So I had a student the other day take all four sections in one day. Guess what? The third and fourth session that they do or section that they do is terrible and they don't do well on it. So we want you to think of it as four separate tests. You want to um, really consider doing that one at a time, okay? You're going to be more effective. You kind of want to leave it all on the field is like a athletic kind of metaphor. Leave it all on the field for that one test rather than four stinking tests. Preparation can take considerably longer. The path, however, is significant. More uh, and better career options, higher earning and sense of achievement uh, that comes with a, <clears throat> excuse me, that comes with a GED credential. Employers, colleges and universities accept a GED credential uh, as they would a high school diploma. On average, GED graduates earn at least $8,400, $8,400 more per year than those uh, with an incomplete high, high school education. So more money in your pocket, right? All right, the GED testing services uh, service has constructed the GED test to mirror a high school experience. As such, you must answer a variety of questions within and across four subject areas. For example, you may consider uh, encounter a social studies passage on the reasoning uh, through language arts test and vice versa. Also, you will encounter questions that require a varying level of cognitive effort, okay? That is what we call depth of knowledge. DOK for short, depth of knowledge. Um, so the following 
table details, uh, the content areas, number of items, score points, and the uh, depth of knowledge levels and total testing time. So we look at these reasoning through language arts. We have inferential text. That's why we hammer New ZLA. And I think that might be even a little higher, 80 or 85%, okay? These numbers vary, obviously. You might have 52 questions. You might have 55 questions. You might have 49 questions. It just depends. You're going to want to have a raw score of 65. Um, the 80% of the items are level two or three on the depth of knowledge, okay? They're not necessarily going to give you a sentence and say the boy walked down the street with his cat and identify the, the verb and that you might have much more difficult things to do, okay? So that's why we work in on a plethora of different things. Math, you have your algebraic reasoning, okay? And then your quantitative problem solving, that's 55 to 45%. It's about 50 questions as well. 50% um, of the items are level two, okay? And you, uh, I forgot this one. This is, you have two, uh, what is it? Two hours and 30 minutes. Okay, so that's our longest test. Yeah, time will tell what people here will be. Oh, let me, let me All right. Um, the next one uh, is hour and 15 minutes. So just shy of two hours is your math. Okay, science. This has got 40% life science, 40% physical science, and then 20% earth and space science. That's how it's broken down. About 34-ish questions. <clears throat> you need a, a raw score of 40. And then 80% um, of the items are level two or three, which, I mean, you're seeing a pattern here, right? All of the reading tests, I call them reading tests, are 80% uh, two or three. This is an hour and a half test, science, okay? That is our highest scoring test or highest pass rate, science. Most people pass science, okay? It has a almost right around a 90% pass rate. Your social studies is US civics and government, US history. So 70% is US. So if you see me not talking about world history and World War II, World War I too much, that's the reason why we wanna talk about local state and national government. Um, being the U.S. government, how it functions, uh, how laws are passed, how um, they're enforced and things like that, okay? <clears throat> and then we have economics is a slight 15%, as well as world history and geography coming at a slight 15% as well. Again, about 35 questions, need a raw score of 30, 80% are level two or three, and you're at an hour and uh, 10 minutes. So it's our shortest test okay so let's buzz through some of these um this just goes through the types of answers you might have multiple choice drop down drag and drop um this is no longer um i tried to make an x oops they're not doing that anymore there is no more short answer for science you got to think about it they have to have people read and grade those short answers and they don't anymore there still is an extended response in RLA, uh, but you'll have hotspot, drag, fill in the blank, drop down, and multiple choice. So you'd be all right with that. Um, we're looking at some of these items here, the content and topics, these topics target and describe uh, in detail the content of the GED. They tie into common core. <clears throat> okay. That's why it's a national test. Okay. Uh, content practices, uh, depth of knowledge. Let's look at depth of knowledge. So level one, you need to recall, observe, question, and represent facts or simple skills. So, okay, I teach you that, um, I don't know, Michael Jordan has one of the highest uh, uh, points per game. You can recall that, okay? <clears throat> Very surface level understanding in level one. And notice all there's only 20% of level one, okay, issued here in the depth of knowledge. Level two is you must process info beyond simple recall and observations to include summarization, ordering, classifying, 
identifying patterns, oops, moving things in relationships and connecting ideas. So that takes it to the next level. Okay, Michael Jordan has a very high uh, average points per game. Why? What did he do? Were they mostly two point or three point or did he get fouled a lot? What are the reasonings? How do you summarize that? How do you order it? How do you classify? How do you take it to the next level? Level three. So we looked at level one, level two, level three. You must explain now, explain, generalize, connect ideas by inferring. So this is the inferencing. This is um, a level or a depth of knowledge that is increased, okay? Elaborate on things and predict why and do some predicting, okay? So taking things to the next step. For example, you may need to summarize from multiple sources. That is not always easy. Use information to develop compositions with multiple paragraphs, okay? Those paragraphs should feature a critical analysis of sources. That level three is definitely in the writing section, okay? So it says 80% of the items are level two and three with the remainder. So 20% will be level one. We already talked about that. Uh, let's move through here. You're testing on a computer, super fun stuff, right? It's gonna look exactly like this. You'll have your information over here. You can highlight information. You have little tools, little information sheets. Um, in math, you'll have a formula sheet and you'll have a calculator and a reference for yourself. Super fun stuff, right? Excuse me. Um, moving on, you will have, you cannot, you can't copy and paste any more. No more copy, cut, or paste on the reasoning through language arts essay, we'll call it. We were seeing, and I went to a training with a GED representative, they were seeing a lot of copy and pasting like, Okay, I'll just copy this paragraph and put it here and it looks like I wrote it. No, you have to analyze and create your own information here. Okay, um, let's move on. So this book, and it's telling you why we should use this book and some of the learning skills, uh, the standards that connect to it, uh, your target goals, you're practicing the skills, then you're putting them into practice, um, breaks down some of this test taking skills and logic. Um, so don't forget about that. They're very brief. I like that they're brief because your, your GED is going to be brief. You're not going to read 14 page document and have to analyze it. It's going to be short like this. Boom. There you go. Read it and, and get through it. Okay. Um, moving on here towards another uh, bit of information. We have our, I guess it breaks down the depth of knowledge. Okay. Um, and then your unit reviews are in this section. You can look at those. I'll print them out for you as well. All right. So what was this? Da, 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 da. All right. This is talking specifically about reasoning through language arts, test taking tips um, that you want to look through. You can look through some of these yourself. Um, you want to, I'm big on looking at numbers and data, especially when you're reason, re, reading through the reasoning through language arts and um, science and social studies. Uh, what's it say? The new GED includes more than 160 items across four subject areas. Okay, 150 questions. All right, just breaking that down. Um, here's a little timeline of what you should be doing maybe four weeks out, okay? Two weeks out and then the day before, it's huge. We'll talk about test taking skills the day before, something like your breathing skills, um, eating well the day before, getting rest the day before, even though you're kind of freaking out, um, eating well that morning, having that day, take a day off of work if you can. I know sometimes money's tight or whatever, but try your best to take that time and utilize it. Uh, let me get somebody down here. All right, Antonia just popped in. Um, so yeah, and don't freak out. Day of the test, you want to, uh, like it says, eat something high in protein. So your body has enough energy to do well for whether it be a two and a half hour test or the hour and 10 minute test, okay? Want you to arrive early. Um, this is not super. I'll just tell you about our testing center. If you came late 
and we had a full schedule, then you're kind of like, it is what it is. But for the most part, if you come that day, we can set you up, whether it's early or later. <clears throat> there is no sort of hanging out in the testing facility. Everybody is hanging out in their cars. Um, you can bring a lunch if you want. If you're taking multiple, obviously take some time. You are allowed to take breaks. You simply raise your hand in the, those instruct, not instructors, but those uh, assessment center, those ladies will let you do that, okay? Uh, Fran Lebowitz, there's, she's actually a, a fantastic author, but she has a new show on Netflix. You need to check it out, it's pretty good. So these are just little blurbs about GED journeys. Um, so Fran um, Lebowitz, reading was the key to good writing, and it always is. Lebowitz uh, truly began to hone her craft. She's a writer in New York, famous person in New York. She left high school without her diploma. She learned the mechanics of storytelling by reading and work uh, of others. As she notes, until I was about seven, I thought books were just there like trees. When I learned that people actually wrote them, I wanted to too. Okay, and she is a famous author. Lebowitz ultimately pursued and obtained her GED certificate and worked a number of odd jobs before landing a position at a columnist in the magazine called Interview. Okay, she also wrote for other mag um, magazines. I don't know how to say that's French, Mademoiselle, uh, before venturing into books. Her first book, a collection of essays called Metropolitan Life. She's on Netflix and the show is called just pretend, I think it's called pretend this is a city, talking about uh, New York City, uh, was published in 1978. Um, that effort was followed by social studies in 81. Uh, through those works and others, Lebowitz became known for her sharp writing commentaries of human nature. Reviewers referred to her dry and sarcastic style as urban cool. If you watch one of the episodes, She's absolutely hilarious. It's like a conversation, not necessarily like stand up, but just as funny as stand up, <clears throat> where she talks about people and how they interact with the city and what they do in the city and things. She really does a lot of complaining, but it's really funny. Um, so check her out. However, for more than a decade, Libowitz suffered from writer's block. During that time, she gave lectures and even guest starred in television series such as Law and Order. Boom, 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 boom. In uh, 1994, she returned to writing with the release of her first child children's book, um, Mr. Chaz, Lisa, uh, Sue, Meet the Pandas, um, and Lisa, Sue, Meet the Pandas for Lebowitz. The book was a labor of love. As she says to me, nothing can be more important than giving children books. That's pretty huge, okay? Um, so check her out. She's actually on Netflix, a uh, pretty interesting human. So that's the end of just the intro. You can go into depth on that. This is language arts and the breakdown of the table of contents. They have main idea and details. We looked at that on IXL. I want you to look at that on this, okay? We look at main idea right here. Main idea of the passage, what time is it? Uh, 41, we have some time, cool. Um, the main idea of the passage, I'm getting a telemarketing call, sweet. Um, the main idea of the passage is the most important point uh, the author wants to make. Paragraphs two have a main idea, so we're also talking about breaking down just paragraphs um, that support the main idea. The main idea is, uh, the main idea of a paragraph is stated in the, what they call the topic sentence, which may appear at the beginning, middle, or the end. And then there are supporting details. Like we looked at that image of, I think it was a chair or a table. You had to have the legs, the details support the main idea or your, your table or your chair is crashing down, which is no bueno. Uh, provide more information uh, about or support the main idea. These details may include facts, okay? Which is huge, explanations, statistics, uh, examples and descriptions just to break it down for you. Uh, all right, so let's do this part and we'll answer this one. We have the answer on the page, but does somebody want to read light and circadian rhythm? I'm not gonna hand, um, highlighting. Anyone? I see I have a lot of volunteers, I can tell you guys. Uh, I'll go. 
All right, let's hear it. Light and circadian rhythm. We live in, in an increasingly 24 seven society with work, family and social pressures all chipping away at our, at our sleep. Mm -hmm. Couple times, <laughs> couple this time with long work hours, shift work, chronic caffeine use and exposure to the glow of computer screens late into the night. And it may be so much more than sleep that suffers. We may also be throwing off body clock, um, our circadian rhythm. That's the definition. Uh -huh. And it controls, and it's control of hundreds of body, body processes that keep us healthy and feeling well. While much is yet to be learned, there is growing evidence that the <clears throat> misaligned body clock can contribute not only to sleep problems, but also increase risk of developing diabetes, diabetes. depression, depression mm -hmm. and obesity, and even some forms of cancer. Wow. For, th for the past 60 years, neuroscientists have been studying the role of light and regulating the body circadian rhythm. Since the early days of studying sleep in caves and underground laboratories, we've been able to determine what light exposure, that light exposure is the great circadian regulator. Most of us naturally have a body rhythm a little longer than 24 hours and light is the major environmental time cue that resets the clock in our brains each day so that we remain synchronized with the 24 hour day. In turn, the clock regulates our sleep and wake cycle, our mood, alertness and performance patterns, hormones, heart rate, and many other functions. Oh yeah, hormones, heart rate, all that. Yeah, sleep is so key. <clears throat> I feel like a hypocrite talking about sleep because I really don't sleep very much personally. Um, I don't know, five hours tops, really five and a half hours, unless it's the weekend. Just <laughs> I have purchased these. Have you seen these? These are blue blockers. Oh, and you, can, you can get them. They're kind of funky. They make me look like I'm on a job, a job site or something. I work on a computer all day. I'm Zooming with you all day. I'm looking into blue light, I'm getting headaches. My sleep's off. These have actually helped. I try, try to start using these the last hour, maybe two hours of the day, I'll keep these with me and they're not prescription. So uh, I actually sometimes wear them over this, which looks funny, but you'll see a pattern. You'll see it very different. And I, I, I definitely feel like the headache are, are gone and you're able to um, kind of work better. It looks funny though. So they have clear ones. These actually have blue blockers too but they're not as, that's a complete blue block. There's nothing, no blue light. <laughs> yeah. So let's look at A, these little uh, pop-ups. By reading and underlining text, you know uh, the main idea that is uh, throwing off the body's, that is throwing off the body's rhythm, circadian rhythm may affect a person's health. The topic sentence makes a broad statement about scientific study of circadian rhythm. The best, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the rest of the paragraph uh, supports the topic sentence by providing more information about what scientists have found in their studies of the circadian rhythm. Okay, so what's this inside the items? Questions may include other words or expressions that ask you to find main ideas or supporting details. For example, you may be asked, what does the author say? It's just saying that instead of saying, what's the main idea? It might say it a different way. Which detail best supports the idea that disrupting the body's circadian rhythm can have a negative effect on a person's body? So which is the best? That's why there's not one answer here. We're looking at what's the best answer. We live in a world in which work, family, and social pressures chip away at our sleep. Does that have to do with our circadian rhythm? Yes. Sort of. I don't know if that's our best answer. A misaligned body clock can increase the risk of developing diabetes, depression, depression obesity, and cancer. Or 
chronic caffeine use interferes with the body's ability to regulate uh, their circadian rhythm or long work hours and shifts work can disrupt sleep patterns. Mm -hmm. say C. Let's look at, let's look at which ones are the, which detail best supports that disrupting the body circadian rhythm can have a negative effect. We need to look at which one has negative effects. So. Let's say B. Yeah, I think B is our best answer because it has all of those negative things like diabetes, depression, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is just talking about caffeine and how it interferes, not that it is a negative effect. Long work hours disrupt sleep patterns. So I think A and D are decent answers, but your B is, that's why some people get very frustrated with tests because they're not, ans they're not asking what is the answer. They're asking which is the best answer, which is makes you want to hurt someone, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, so then they have another one about the benefits of wind energy, uh, another section about summarization that we can look at another time. I'm going to email all of you guys this again. Um, some of you have it, and it might ask you to link up with um, or download it or something like that from a particular cloud. If it does, just click yes. It's not any trick. It's not spam. Determine sequence. We can look at that. There's scientific method we talked about. Notice that this is RLA and it's still talking about science and social studies, okay? Uh, order of events, that would put the order of the kind of an experiment together. Um, categorization or categorizing, okay? We can look at that as well. These are really tiny little like examples here, <clears throat> excuse me. And also, um, did I get the answers here? Where are the answers like that? No. I guess I didn't print the answer for this. Um, our last section, so identifying cause and effect. Okay, lesson five. And then compare and contrast is the last one. So we can look at these. Probably we'll pop popcorn a couple of them just together. But for the most part, I want you, I'm going to give you as many tools as I can. You're going to have a, like a tool belt full of tools. IXL, mm -hmm. New ZLA, these what are called Steck and Vaughn uh, preparation, uh, what do I call them, uh, preparation textbooks. I have another one that's called college and career textbooks. I'll give you them as well. They're kind of um, pretty good as well. Anytime where you're reading something, you have to answer questions, bingo, bango. Just to overview real quick, here is the science one. And I, again, I tried to copy these with the, uh, the highest brightness and it's gonna go through a similar, um, I'll get up and I highlighted a bunch of things on here, just like the last one. Um, where is it? Let's get to the, like the first lesson. This is just, this is the calculator you will use. So don't go and buy one. You don't have to buy one. Um, I would YouTube some of this to see exactly kind of how to use it the best. Um, this is going to help you as well, knowing, it, knowing like where's the exponent key. If you didn't know that, that's that. Um, I don't really play a lot with this because it's math. I'm sure your math teacher will. Um, science. Talking about this is a, a gentleman that is in Washington, D.C. and got a GED. Okay. Um, life science. We're specifically talking about illust uh, in interpret illustrations, main idea details but with scientific information, breaking down cells over here. As you can see, we looked through this already uh, in earlier this year, actually last semester, so last year. Uh, identifying main idea, talking about things like cell and multicellular organis organisms. This is what's tough about this. I don't like reading about science. So this is, I already think this is boring. But you gotta kind of switch your mind around and saying, I'm not necessarily having to memorize any of this information. I just need to read it, understand the information and ask, not ask, but to um, answer specific questions, okay? Uh, they get into some of the nervous system, digestive system, fun stuff. Um, that's the end of it. I put a little mark on that. Here's social studies uh, and it's the same idea. Yeah. All right. 
Okay. Um, so that's the social studies where they have, uh, again, just a, a bunch of different opportunities here to look through um, the different types of lessons. I kind of buzzed through that too quick. We looked at um, breaking down geography. I know geography is a small portion of it, but really looking at maps um, and uh, any kind of visual like this with a little blurb on the side, that's where test writers are asking questions right here. Uh, and we can look at some of that at another point in time, understanding map components, uh, understanding, and that's just more. You're sending this to us, right? I'm gonna send all these to you, yeah. Just more, more application for you. This is uh, the next section of it after it was done, unit two, Mary Lou Retton. So, all right. And then the last bit of social studies, which I think is just the answers, okay? So, all right, let's stop sharing because it is 53, 553. Woo, we did it. Another one done. Um, questions, comments for me? Um, just a quick question. When, uh, when we get this material, are we able to manipulate them on the computer like you did or yeah so it's going to be yeah it's going to be sent to you like a pdf so if yours is similar to this you can use that highlight you can uh i i actually can write a little note in there or you can do whatever you want okay okay all right so um yeah if there's no questions you guys are good to go um you got six minutes before math so good luck with that Okay, I'll say a little <laughs> for you. So, righty. Bye. All right, Bye. All right my friends. Bye. If you need Bye. to stay back and ask questions, you can. Bye. Mr. Turner, you still need to talk? Yeah. So, Sarah, you I'm getting emails from the uh from where you're at with a different last name. Yeah, my, my name was changed in August and they still have me under McVeigh and it's Hethco. Yeah, we have that. We I have you and all of my stuff under that. So it's changed in August. I just need to, I'm, I'm in a conference with my uh, assistant principal about it. Okay. Okay. So you're, you're in class. Did you pay for second semester? Yeah. So you're good to go. I don't know what the emails were for. I'm kind of confused. I think Mr. Brochner was confused. Yeah, because of the different last names, because we still have you in the system as McVeigh. Yeah. So, and we'll do that until you, like there's a change, uh, a name change form that you can do as well. Okay? Okay. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.